Hey, it's that time of year again. It's late summer. And what that means to someone like me, well, that means a lot of different tech launches in particular, a lot of different camera launches. Three days ago, we saw the folks at Zero Zero Robotics upgrade their selfie flying drone, the Hover X1, bringing forth two new models, the Hover X1 Pro and the Hover X1 Pro Max. Now, in a couple short days on September 5th, we actually get to hear what DJI is bringing forth in their contender, the DJI Neo. In this video, we'll talk about the specs that we know through the Indiegogo campaign for the new series on the X1 side, and then we'll talk about some of the rumors and things we're hearing on the street as what we can expect to hear on September 5th from the folks at DJI about their new drone, the Neo. I'll end this stream by going over whether I decided to fund one of the X1 models or I decided to wait for the DJI Neo. So about five months ago, I actually reviewed the original Hover Air X1, and I have to say, I absolutely had a blast with this little flying machine. It's super compact, super portable, folds down upon itself, easy to shove in one of your pockets, and I found myself just bringing it along for a lot of my different adventures because I barely even noticed it was there. One of the other cool things is it has a lot of autonomous flying modes, and you can simply just hit buttons on top of the drone, and it will do certain different sequences. It will do like a flyaway, a pull in 360 fly around things like tracking and dolly shots so i think it's a very useful piece of kit however i found a couple things that were a bit of a negative in my opinion first and foremost it only was getting about eight minutes of flight time out of each battery second the camera just was really subpar we're only shooting to 2.7k at 30 frames per second and if you wanted to do any type of slow-mo it was at 1080p capped at 60 frames per second. The camera itself had a poor sensor, so any type of low light shooting was out of the question. So if you're trying to do things like sunrises and sunsets or shooting during the golden hour, this thing was just too grainy and noisy and you really couldn't use the footage. So for those reasons, I actually said, you should wait to see what they bring out next. And lo and behold, what do we see? Well, we see a response to a lot of those issues and they seem to have knocked it out of the park according to the specs. So this is their Indiegogo campaign. You can see they've almost raised $3 million, 4,000 backers. They're guaranteeing that they ship it out by October 31st or your money back. Now I can say you can absolutely trust this campaign. I know Indiegogo and things like that can be rather icky, but to be honest with you, this is where their roots are. I think this is their second or third launch uh, and they've done really well. You can see actually in their roadmap, they're well beyond prototype and they're into production, which makes sense because they're guaranteeing that October 31st ship date. So with that, let's talk about their two new bottles, the X1 Pro and the X1 Pro Max. The X1 Pro features 4K 60 frames per second. It also has a 1080p 120 frame per second slow motion mode. It is a 1 over 2 inch CMOS sensor, which is a 17 millimeter equivalent wide lens. It's an auto follow speed of 42 kilometers per hour. It has an instantaneous tracking speed of 60 kilometers per hour. It now has omni terrain system, which basically means we can fly over water, snow, and off things like cliff without it stuttering or stopping like the original version. It doubled the flight time now with 16 minutes of flight time per battery. It's 192 grams. It now has rear side active collision detection, maximum altitude of 5,500 meters. Now we're gonna see the X1 Pro Max. The X1 Pro Max is pretty freaking amazing. As far as I know, at least in this category, it's the only small drone that's shooting right now, world's first 8K, 30 frames per second, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now the reason, there's a lot of debate about 8K, it's not needed. Oh, it's overkill. But if you're going to do anything like pushing in on a 4K canvas, that's going to give you a lot more real estate to deal with. And it's going to give you kind of a lossless type zoom on a lot of your footage. So I think there is a lot of value in post with 8K footage. It also is going to shoot in 4K 120 slow-mo, which is incredible in my opinion. 4K 60 frames per second HDR. And then get this, 10-bit HLG formatting, which is also incredible. It carries a 1 over 1.3 CMOS sensor and is a 16 millimeter wide lens equivalency. Of course, it has all of the other things of the other series, the X1 Pro with the collision detection, the automated features via the top button. It also features an LCD screen, which is new. So overall, it looks like they made some really solid upgrades and the X1 Pro Max, in my opinion, 
is I'm, I'm absolutely kind of blown away by these specs. So let's take a look about the campaign itself. Now the campaign itself was launched, as I mentioned, three days ago. They are now offering some discounts on some of their models and bundles. If you're just looking to get the standalone, here's the Hover Air X1 429 Early Bird. It's going to retail 499. Let's call it 500. A little more after shipping, probably. This thing's going to come with like a USB cable, uh, storage back, and one battery. If we scroll down to the other model, which is the X1 Pro Max, that's going to be $629 for an early bird special, and it's going to retail for $699 or $700. Now, there's a lot of different combos you can get as well, but let's scroll down to the biggest combo. This is their skiing combo, and it's going to come with a lot of different accessories, a charging hub, which is just a hub that can charge multiple batteries, a 65-watt charger, that's just a wall wart. A power case, not a power case, is something you can put your batteries in and it will charge it so you can get more use out of those batteries. Tug it in your jacket, charge on the, on the lift, kind of cool. It also has 4X ND filters. This is awesome because the original one, you didn't have any ability to put on ND filters. Comes with a original battery, USB-C cable, some carrying cases, two thermal batteries. Now the thermal batteries are pretty cool. These are batteries designed to be used down to, I think like negative four degrees Fahrenheit. So if you are doing any action sports, the original one, it would just drain really quickly in any cold weather. Now that's gonna be solved hopefully by the addition of these thermal batteries. Although you'll have to buy these if you don't get a package like this. You also get in a beacon carrying case and a beacon plus joystick. Now the beacon is rather interesting and that's because it is a small device that you can get and it has a small LCD screen on it and you're gonna be able to see a live feed. So let's say you're tracking behind your car, you're actually gonna see a live feed so you can make sure you're in frame and stuff like that. I think that's really awesome. It's also gonna give you greater connectivity, meaning it's just gonna be able to track a lot better when it's connected to that beacon as well. The other thing the beacon provides is the ability to actually attach some joysticks to it where you can fly it with just one or fly it with two attached to your phone. Kind of like a DJI um, old school controller, but it actually gives you actual physical buttons. The original ones, you had a soft flying joystick, which means you're using your touch screen and the manual mode really wasn't that great. So I'm glad to see they've actually included that. And I'm anticipating because it's faster um, and they probably were focusing a bit more on folks that may want to fly this manually. Uh, I think they, they've probably done a good job seeing as they're putting out this little beacon. And I think the beacon's a really cool piece of tech. Now, if we look at some of the prices, now these are early bird prices for some of the accessories. Now, this is on top. If you just buy a standalone, you're going to have to buy these things. So, 125 early bird. I don't know what the final retail is going to be. The beacon and joystick is going to be 189 and it's going to retail for 199 So, that's $200. And you can see things like the thermal battery, another $100. So, things can add up rather quickly, and that's kind of my point. Uh, if you are going to buy a standalone, let's say you get it at retail, it's 500 bucks plus another 200 if you're just getting the joystick and the beacon. So you're at $700. If you go down here with the Pro Max, we are now $700 at retail plus $200. You're now at $900. So the pricing is, in my opinion, rather steep when you consider something like buying a DJI drone. And this brings me to one of my points, and that point is, if this is your only drone, you may want to consider for that type of money looking at something like a DJI. And why I say that is because you can get a DJI Mini Pro brand new for $759. So that would be comparable, what, $59 uh, more dollars than if you were going to buy the X1 Pro with joysticks. Uh, you can then go on up and let's say you're going to buy that big package for $1,500. You know, you're now reaching into maybe a Mavic Pro or certainly getting something like a Mavic Classic. Now, these things are interesting because what you're going to get for your money is a lot uh, more flight time, 45 minutes on average. Let's say you're going to get a couple different shooting modes and you're actually going to get a 1 over 1.3 CMOS. Now, the reason that's important is because the uh, this one is only a 1 over 2 inch CMOS which is the Pro, and it's not until you get up to the Pro Max that you're getting the same sensor that comes with, let's say, the DJI Pro Air and Pro, and also the Mavic uh, Standard, if you will, uh, Classic. So CMOSs are comparable. Where it breaks down a little bit is you're going to get 4K 100, which again is better than the uh, Pro. The Pro, you're only going to get 1080 um, up to 120, so you're not going to get it in 4K. 
Now these are 100 for both these models, and then when you get into the Mavic series, you're going to get a true 120, but 100 frames per second really isn't that far off, which, yes, 20 frames, but it still produces really good slow motion. I actually ended up getting this one on sale through the refurbished for $600. Of course, all these also come with a controller, and mine for the $600 refurbished came with the controller that has the actual LCD screen on it. So I think this brings into light the discussion really quickly. If it's your only drone, I think you have a fork in the road that you need to make a decision. And I'll put it in two different camps for you. One is the beginner, or maybe you have a child that you're buying this for, or someone who doesn't have any aspirations of doing a whole lot of other stuff with their drone. Remember, the DJIs are still going to have a lot of these autonomous features. You're going to be able to do fly arounds, tracking, things like that. So that's comparable, but you're going to be able to do a lot more, fly it a lot farther away. But it is heavier, a lot more responsibility in flying it. Um, a lot faster and although it's super compact uh, as I mentioned you know you're still going to be adding a quite a bit more weight as compared to these smaller drones but overall that's your choice so if you're a beginner and you just don't think that you're going to take it any farther than you know doing these type of automated shots or some light manual flying uh, and, or you're a beginner and you're intimidated by these larger drones I think it's a great option for you However, if you're a beginner and you have a small budget, but you have aspirations of doing a lot more with your drone, then I think you may want to be putting that money towards a DJI for your first drone. So those are the two camps in terms of your first drone. If this is your second drone, well, 120 at 4K, and then we have, what, 8K shooting. I think the choice is pretty clear in terms of that. If you're into photography and you're going to be using it for a lot of different video purposes. So that's kind of my breakdown on what I think you should be looking at and how you should be looking at that in terms of what camp you're in. Because there is going to be that glass ceiling with the hover series where you're going to take it to a point And if you really get into it or if you have a child that gets into it, they're going to say, Mom, Dad. Uh, I want a better one. I want a DJI. So if we have that going on, you may want to consider maybe just going straight to the DJI if your child's old enough or if you're a big kid like me and it's your first drone and you really do think you are not intimidated and want some extra features, go for the DJI. So the only other thing to talk about is September 5th. In a few days, we're actually going to see DJI's contender in this space when they launch their version, the DJI Neo. Now the DJI Neo is going to be a small little drone similar to the Hover series and I have a feeling it's going to do a lot of the similar things as the Hover series does in terms of all of its autonomous features. Now before we go over any of these things, these are all rumors. So take it with a grain of salt. We don't know exactly what we're going to see and we're going to have to wait more than likely until September 5th till we get any solid details. But these are pretty solid leaks from a lot of different sources that have been right in the past. So with that, let's take a look at what this thing actually looks like according to the leak. So here it is. It fits in the palm of your hand. You'll notice right away on top we have a couple of these soft buttons. Now these soft buttons right here um, are actually probably going to be similar to what we're seeing on the hover where you can push them and they'll do things like fly arounds. They'll do things like flyaways, pull-ins, tracking, dolly shots. Uh, I really do think we'll see that out of this, just judging by the picture. Now, some of the other things that they're talking about, well, I have it on a good word that I think this is probably going to be 4K30, maybe 4K60, but I'm leading into the 4K30. I'll talk about the reasoning why in a minute. I also think it's going to be slow-mo capped at 1080. Maybe we'll see 120, but I think it's more likely we see 60. The rumor on the street is also that we're going to see a 1 over 2 inch sensor, which is comparable to the Hover X1 Pro, so same size sensor. But the Hover X1 Pro is going to shoot in 4K60 and is also going to shoot in 1080, 120. So I don't think we'll see that from the Neo. With the Neo, there's also a couple other things that you should be aware of. There is an outside rumor that it will hook up to goggles. I kind of toss that one aside because they just launched the Avada 2, so I don't think they want to do any type of cross-pollination there. Uh, I think it will fly in manual mode, and the reason is because it's also rumored to come with a joystick or a controller that you're going to be able to use to fly this thing in manual control. Now, one of the things about DJI, they've been doing this for a long time, so I have a feeling it's going to fly quite nice if you are going to use this in manual. And as I mentioned, it will still have all those autonomous features, in my opinion. 
perhaps one of the biggest rumors, and I think this is probably going to be right, is I think this is going to be under $400. And I think that's important because, yeah, it lacks a lot of the frames per second that we're seeing out of the Hover series. Um, but it also has, you know, it remains to be seen. Is it going to have something like full obstacle avoidance? Again, because of that price point, I doubt that it will. Um, but it's going to come with a control and it's 400. And when you're looking at the hover series, you're looking at spending, you know, at the minimum $700 for the same type of sensor if you want to have a controller. So four versus $700, this is going to be a tough little battle, especially if you don't need those higher end frame rates. Again, all rumors, don't hang me if I'm wrong, but I did want to bring this up during this discussion. So that brings us to what are you going to do? Well, what I decided to do was actually fund the X1 hover Pro Max. And the reason I did that was because of the frames per second. It's absolutely amazing that I'm going to get 8K, but I'm also going to get 4K 120. So that beats any drones that I currently have in my lineup right now. And I really enjoyed my time with the original one. I really like the form factor and the way it folds down. It's really, really quiet and discreet, which is super important to me. Not only when I'm out and, you know, out and about in the woods and stuff, you know, want to be quiet. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter too much then if it's discreet. Um, but overall, if I'm in a crowded environment, I also don't want to be annoying and have this noisy drone flying around. So I don't know what the Neo is going to bring, if it's going to give that classic DJI whine or not, but I can say the original hover really wasn't too loud. So I think there's an advantage there. And it's my second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth drone, something like that. I already have a DJI. So I think this fits really nicely into my lineup. And in fact, I think there's going to be situations where I can just bring this which means I'm going to save a bit of weight uh, over grabbing something like my uh, DJI Mini Pro 4. So what you should do, I don't know. I just wanted to present these facts to you and tell you what I did. Will I be getting the Neo? Well, as you know, I independently fund this uh, adventure here on YouTube. So I don't have a whole lot of money. So I don't really know if I'm going to be able to afford the Neo or not. If I have a good month, I may be able to purchase this as well. But overall, I will definitely have a review coming up as soon as I get it on the Hover Air Pro Max. And I'll bring that to you as soon as I get it. So if you found any value in this, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm Hill Phantom. I'll see you next time.